This is Twit. So I thought when we uh, were preparing this show that WWDC be the big story. Well, then Sheryl Sandberg decided to quit. <laughs> and uh, that has to be the big story. Let me start with you, uh, Jill, because Cheryl became almost a feminist icon some years ago when she published Lean In. Uh, she survived, you know, the death of her husband and a lot of adversity uh, and became more and really more and more important at Meta. I don't think she had the role when she first started. She had the tech, the name chief operating officer, but I think she really became more and more important uh, as Mark Zuckerberg's uh, partner over the years. Yeah, I mean, she was always kind of known as the grown up in the room. Right. right. She she was the one who brought a little bit of an air of professionalism, um, kind of held things together. And it's hard. It's it's hard to uh, judge anybody for stepping down when they've been in a position for a long time in a company that's had taken a lot of heat and rightfully so. Um, it sounds like there may be some issues related to burnout for her. So, you know, I don't fault her for stepping down. Absolutely not. Although Meta had just been kind of reorganized with the uh, uh, annunciation of um, uh, Nick Clegg to do global affairs, it looked like a triumvirate for a while. So they had Mark Zuckerberg handling the software and the technologies and then Sheryl Sandberg running the business and then Nick Clegg fending off <laughs> the government attacks. Alex, uh, what does this do to the structure? She won't be leaving till this fall. Yeah. But does this change how, Nef how Netflix, how uh, Meta runs? I, I think so. I think it's indicative of the change in the company's focus. I mean, Sheryl Sandberg is synonymous with the company's advertising business because she was really brought on to build that. And now as the company moves more towards the, the metaverse, which I think is one of the squishiest concepts in all of the history of technology, um, I, I think it just she makes less sense as the obvious number two. And honestly, just speaking as a human, who wants to be one of two and then suddenly told you can be one of three? Well, that's I mean, true. It, it yeah. feels like a demotion by dilution. Although so, I would think she would want the shield that Nick Clegg. I mean, the biggest headwind for Meta are these days is government I inquiries, right? Uh, and let Nick handle. I, that's what I felt like Mark was saying. Oh, yeah, we don't have to do this, Cheryl. Let's just let Nick handle that. He's like Mikey. He'll do anything. Just let him do it. I, I just, you know, if, if I was her and I had had this one particular job that I had run for so long and then the company that I had essentially built, um, the financial side of it at least, said, hey, we're going to pivot and do something else entirely different. Right. I would I would be like, cool, have fun. I've already made my money. I'm going to go sit on a boat. And you would never, personally, you would never hear from me again. I would be too busy enjoying the sun and an endless supply of, uh, I don't know, margaritas or whatever. She, in an interview after she uh, announced her resignation, she said, this shouldn't be taken as a sign that Meta is moving away from the advertising business, which is probably right since it's 98% of their re <laughs> the revenue. Uh, uh, Javier Olivan will succeed her. Uh, he is uh, head of product engineering and he'll take over ad sales as well. Um, but I wonder, Dan, if this isn't really, as, uh, as Alex says, kind of a sign of the times for Meta that they are moving to the metaverse. I, I, hard for me to know. I should I should make a disclosure before I say anything, and that is that the Facebook Journalism Project funded one of our projects, um, and as it, as it did Jeff Jarvis's as well. They've uh, been very good actually doing that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I saying that there's a uh, sort of this triumvirate that was forming. It's hard to be part of a triumvirate where. One person controls everything. It's all the shares. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I think the best description of the the structure of Facebook is that it's an empire with an emperor, and it isn't her, and it isn't this, it isn't Clegg. It's it's Zuckerberg. It's, right. it's so, uh, it, and it's it's hard to suggest to me anyway that much is going to change. She says she wants to focus on her philanthropic uh, efforts, and uh, uh, I, you know, she intimated that uh, for a woman with a high profile, this is an important time to become an activist. Probably referring to Roe v. Wade and other women's issues, but there's also been some, you know, nattering about maybe political ambitions. Diane Feinstein's 88; she's up for a reelection in two years. Uh, our senator from California. I could see, uh, you think, Jill, uh, that's part of the equation? 
You know, it's not something that I, I follow very closely. I think, you know, the, the larger issue that I see here is that we put so much pressure and spotlight on people who are um, executives. What are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? It's, I don't know. I, I don't follow any of her political ambitions, so I don't know, but um, you know, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be just as happy to see people, you know, fade out and do what they want to do. <laughs> the, the thing I throw in there, Jill, is that, I mean, if you keep going to Davos and you keep sitting on stage, you put yourself into the conversation to a degree. Now, that yeah. doesn't mean that she has to do anything next. I mean, again, I would be on a boat. Um, but, you know, Diane Feinstein was my, my senator when I lived in California for a while. And uh, it's probably time for a fresh face. And we have seen, I think, business people, generally speaking, presume that they can translate their experience into the political sphere. Um, don't forget Howard Schultz, uh, Starbucks man himself, tried to run for president, I believe it was, before Biden ran. And, Didn't get uh, very far either, did he? No. Turns out money and business acumen do not always translate into electoral yeah. politics. And yeah. so to me, I, 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 I doubt that just because I don't think it would go that well. I kind of, I, Jill, I agree. Burnout is probably a big part of it. She's estimated that her net worth is $1.6 billion. Uh, she doesn't probably have to do anything. <laughs> She's got kids. She remarried and uh, or is about to remarry actually next month. That might be the other reason. I mean, she, she's got a new family. She might want to spend time with them. And you know what? God bless her. That's not an issue really for us to worry about. More, uh, more interest is what it means uh, to Meta. Mark's spending $10 billion a year. He's got 18,000 engineers working on whatever this next thing is, Metaverse is. Clearly, that's Mark's focus. Uh, and, and by the way, people have said that uh, Javier, her successor, is not going to be the same powerhouse that Sandberg was. So maybe this is kind of, is it, is it kind of the beginning of the deceleration for Facebook, the social network? You know, it's funny about this. If you think about the the end of the Google era with the founders, they kind of yeah. stepped away. So did Eric Schmidt, who was their adult in the room, back to Jill's earlier point about what Cheryl's done for Facebook meta. Um, we're seeing the opposite. We're almost seeing a doubling down from Zuck, if you will, because if uh, if the replacement for Cheryl is going to have less power internally, and as you know, Dan pointed out, it's certainly soft power because it's not based on voting control of the company. Uh, he seems to concentrate more power back in the hands of the monarch or the emperor, depending on uh, which which phrase well, you prefer. He doesn't have the power any regardless. Uh, he's making a big bet. I mean, uh, if all your money comes from advertising, and and that will probably continue for some time, still to to focus so much of your energies in the and eighteen thousand engineers and all that money on uh, the metaverse is a big is a big bet. It's a big gamble. Eighteen thousand engineers doing what? Is my question. Good question. Maybe I got that number wrong. I think that's what that's what I remember. I might have that wrong. We I mean, Jill, Dan, do you guys play games? Are you interested in the metaverse? Because to me, like, <laughs> like I, I'm a I'm a gamer and a person who has a PC that can run the stuff. And uh, I keep waiting to care. No interest. <laughs> Just I don't. No. No. You know what? Many, many years ago I was um I worked for Game Developer magazine. I was the managing editor of Game Developer magazine. And this is the early two thousands. And there was so much talk even then about, you know, what's what's going to happen with mobile games, because that was still like pre iPhone days. What are mobile games going to do, how they're going to, you know, some customized advertising to you based on your location. And there was this whole um, immersive technology idea, which I guess we're now sort of calling the metaverse. And like it comes up in conversation, but it's a matter of what what do people actually want? What do people want to engage with? And I think you'll always get a slim number of people who are willing to go all in and try it out and be on Second Life and have their classroom there and whatever else. But like, will it catch on with everybody? My answer is no. I don't I don't think it's going to be a big explosion. It's a it's a hard thing when you're you, uh, you know, a tech company. We always talk about the innovators dilemma uh apple's in the same boat where 52 percent of their revenue now comes from one product uh it's always a challenge to say well you know this engine isn't going to go forever what's the next lily pad we're going to leap to and i i don't i think it makes sense for facebook to be looking for another lily pad but i i agree with both of you i don't feel like the metaverse is going to be the next big thing that's what that, you think do you think that if you read a lot of science fiction They've done a good job of sort of um, 
using acquisitions to spread out what their business does a little bit, right? Like if you look at WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook, those are sort of the three big pillars, right? But they own a whole lot more than that. Um, And I think that may have been strategically in a business sense, their best move to date is sort of um, diversify through, through acquisitions. But how do they monetize WhatsApp? They haven't, I mean, they don't, they're not putting ads. I haven't used WhatsApp in a long time. They don't put ads in it, right? I don't know if they can even monetize that. That's really more of a service than a, than a profit center. Instagram, I do use and is worse and worse all the time, <laughs> isn't it? It's terrible. I see photographers now saying, where do we go? What do we use? This is not a good place to show off your photography. It's now, it's looking like Facebook. It's so algorithmic that you don't know what you're going to see. I have what I see. I don't even know who these people are. Maybe some of these uh, issues are, uh, this is, you know, my fond wish that never has come true yet, that we're going to go back to uh, a truly decentralized creator economy, not Absolutely. not a web three, by the way, no. the, as it's developing, no. but yeah. where we're, uh, blogging the way it was makes a comeback where a number of things happen oh, yeah. to give people their own platforms where they don't live or die at the uh, whim of a couple of very large companies. So it, if I had a wish, it would be that all of these moves in the end become irrelevant. Okay, Don Quixote. <laughs> no, I mean, shout out to Dan for saying that. I mean, the the, the I agree. I'm with you 100. percent Yeah. Look uh, at the popularity of or email Look. newsletters. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's true. There is this kind of new uh, writer as auteur <clears throat> thing. Maybe that. Maybe that's some of it. Uh, uh, podcasting yeah. is con- is consolidating. It's going to be yeah. a few big companies, and that's that. Yeah. It's noteworthy on newsletters that uh, a venture funded company is trying to basically create a monopoly there. So uh, on a platform basis. So uh, be careful. We get what we wish for. Isn't that what Tim Wu says happens, though? It's inevitable. Is this kind of consolidation? aggregation? Yes, but he was talking about telecom in, right. and, and media in a different way, I think. But his yes, Tim's book is must read for everybody on this topic. Yeah. Can, um, can we go back to Leo's point about Instagram becoming Facebook? Because there seems to be a, a parallel here between what we observe in the world of fintech and what we see in the world of social networks. And in fintech, mm-hmm. uh, all companies end up looking like one another. Like Square started off with a little credit card reader. Now it does, you know, a zillion million things that are very similar to what SoFi does, which are, and all fintech kind of becomes the same thing over time. I wonder if there's like a crapification endpoint for all social <laughs> networks when they essentially become so uh, over-optimized for near-term ad incomes that the user experience must be essentially whacked with a stick repeatedly. I think there's a um, lot of examples of that. You know, what's interesting is that Twitter, you would expect Twitter to become like that. And it seems to be resilient to that somewhat. They're killing TweetDeck, Leo. I'm sorry. They're killing my, my <laughs> They're beloved not killing, Mac okay. app. They're killing the Mac app, which is just an electron interface to the web. The web is still going to be there. You can use a browser. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why, I know. Why, I why love tweet tech. It's the only way to use Twitter because you can yeah. control it and there's no ads. I, I go to great lengths to not put apps on devices and use web interfaces wherever possible. Yeah. I read an article recently about how I got myself off of Instagram the same way. So I don't use the Instagram app. I still look at it, but I use it on a mobile web browser and it is so pared down. It looks nothing like TikTok when you use it that way. Oh. You don't get as many videos pushed in your face and you only oh. see content from people you follow. It's adding a little bit of friction can help. That's brilliant. I'm going to have to start doing that. I, I don't want Instagram is the only Facebook property, meta property that I have an account with. And it's just so that because they set it up, you can't show Instagram pictures. And I like to show people's images and stuff without an account. Actually, the same thing with Facebook, but I don't care. (laughs) When I pulled up Sheryl Sandberg's message, there's a one third of the screen is, well, you're not a member. Join, log in. No, no. You know, you mentioned that you don't use WhatsApp and, um, Leo, as you know, I've kind of lived in a couple of different places around the world, and it's really hard to impress upon people in the United States how much WhatsApp is used outside of the U.S. So it's not just for person to person communication, but it's also businesses. So, you know, my friends in Colombia, when they order takeout food, they WhatsApp the restaurant 
yeah. and send a direct payment. And that's how their food comes. Like WhatsApp really fills in a lot of gaps um, in, in mobile offerings outside of the US in ways that people don't seem to understand. And the other kicker to this is that a lot of phone companies outside of the US will offer WhatsApp messages or Facebook messenger messages for free so that it doesn't deplete people's data usage. And that's really how they've gotten their claws in. <laughs> I like Dave Gilmore's scare quotes when you said yeah. free. <laughs> but that remember internet.org, that was Facebook's attempt to become the internet for a whole bunch of uh, developing nations. India said, no, we have a good experience with colonialism. Not a good experience. <laughs> yep. We have a history. Not we don't this want time. To do it again. Not this time. Not again. 